All right, and welcome back, all assassins, templars, and neutrals alike. And it's once again another episode of the Council Podcast. Yay! Now it's a Christmas <laughs> special. <laughs> yeah, I guess it, would be, it would count as a Christmas special. Did you actually pull up Christmas songs for that? Yes, right on my laptop. <laughs> I pressed the space. Uh-huh. I pressed the space bar, but it wouldn't play. So I was a few seconds too late. <laughs> oh my god! Um, <laughs> but we're here. Happy holidays. Yeah, we're here. Had a little hiatus because school, work, and everything in between. COVID. But yeah, and COVID, all of the lovely things in life right now in this crazy world of 2020. So we're just going to go down the list of who is here. We got a long time returner today as well from like previous seasons of one and two. So we have today Cinnamon. Hi. <laughs> uh, Bellic. I hope I pronounced your name. You have done so correctly. Yay. Um, then we also have Aiden. I do not know how to pronounce your your new username at all. Oh, it's it's cool. Just Aiden works. It's... All right. Bonjour. And then I'm Mama Emmers. And today, this is actually, for once, a spoiler-free episode. Yes. No spoilers. Yes. No spoilers. Which is going to be hard. <laughs> Nothing regarding the campaign from the past or the modern day. Just get that out yes, there. This, like we can talk about. This is all of. Yeah, we can talk about the story. Just can't go into too much detail. Yeah, so right. can't talk about the specifics of the storyline or like characters or anything else to make sure that people who haven't gotten the game yet are good. We all have lists. That Bella has written up for yep. us of what we're going to talk about today. Yep. Wrote it on the very same so, receipt that I got. We will also for. host another episode in about a month to six weeks, um, talking about the actual game itself and the actual story, which will include spoilers, so that we have more time to play and everything else. Um. So yeah, I guess let's just get started. All right. <laughs> At the top of the list is Ivor. Just Ivor's character in general doesn't matter what gender you picked him as or her as just what do we think of the guy person viking whatever <laughs> understandable <laughs> um so like who starts on this uh i guess <laughs> ember should start since she's the host <laughs> yeah um, she should start so i want to say personally i played both i played full of female at first but one day I just basically thought, hmm, I wonder what the Mel version sounds like. And I switched over and I've kept Mel Avor since because his voice is so soothing. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds less like someone who's had a few too many pints, I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, just like personality wise, I love the fact that you kind of get a customized. Uh, their personality throughout the story with all the different side missions and so forth we do around the world of England. So, mine loves fire <laughs> and thinks there's a solution to everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So, yes, very, um, very well fleshed out character there. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta say, I, I definitely enjoy male Ivor just a little bit more than female Ivor, to be honest, because in my eyes, male Ivor just sort of makes more sense in the story, and mm-hmm. it just seems like uh, he just seems to blend in better with his environment than he would if he were the female version. Uh, not that the female version is total garbage or anything, but I just personally enjoy playing male Ivor just a little bit more. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, God. (laughs) Take your time. Um, I mean, because, like, I haven't really played any of the Assassin's Creed games, like, uh, where was it? Um, Odyssey and Origins yet, because I don't have money. (laughs) But I watch live stream. Um, So, I mean... I've read also reviews, so considerably, I've seen a lot more people playing the male anyway, so uh, <laughs> I don't really know too well with the females. I, I feel like I should find someone who plays 
the females but i think you had a point though because um i don't want to like i mean I'm a, I'm a girl obviously but like i i feel really weird um like not to say like that there wasn't like very powerful females back then but like there wasn't a lot of females who were very involved with these things so i always just feel like it could be very odd place to see like a woman being involved in like kind of more of a man thing yeah i don't know how to explain it without sounding very sexist <laughs> it's um, like we, we got you we got you but like I'm, I'm hoping people understand like that's just my concerns i would feel really more for like female like main characters like this would fit more like in kind of uh closer to our age uh, our our timeline really not too far back in the past it was um it was a different thing with uh cassandra in odyssey like somehow cassandra worked yeah. more than ivor would uh in the position that they yeah. were both in yeah it's understandable heavily like yeah he's right in that so i didn't and cassandra was the canon one after all so yeah right yeah <laughs> so i didn't what do you think yeah. of ivor as a character um personally i actually really like the established things because there's things that are established and things that you kind of build on your own from there um so what they have established for the character i personally really like it gives the character a strong sense of being fully fleshed out so that way you're not like playing and feeling like oh i'm playing as an empty shell or something like that like there's a lot of references to the past. There's a lot of little stories uh, Avor speaks about. Um, I play the male because, of course, I just always have a preference for playing the male character. Um, as players play throughout the story, it'll make sense what's what and what's not. But for now, like that's just pretty much how it kind of is. Um, but overall, I really like the character and the voice acting. I think they did really good with it. I thought I was really concerned for it. I thought his smooth, his voice was a little too smooth and and suave in a way. But after listening to it for a while, I'm like, okay, they actually picked the right guy for this. Yeah. You just gotta get used to it. Yeah, you gotta get used to it. <laughs> well said. Very well said. Okay. All right. Is is that everybody's thoughts on Ivor? Yep. Okay, because next up yeah. is. <laughs> story yeah we're moving this right along so basically just our thoughts on let's say the pacing whether it's good or not it can be about the past and the modern day just no specific details about what goes on uh i can honestly say that i was definitely interested in what was going on throughout the story from the transition from norway to england and where things picked up from there uh i was a lot more interested in the assassin side of things uh than i was in the viking settlement issues and building uh relationships with the other nearby kingdoms but uh both were actually pretty enjoyable nonetheless i gotta say and uh it definitely doesn't feel like as much of a grind as it was in odyssey to get like a to get further along in the story at least until you get like towards the end but still it was still i was still allowed to enjoy it that much i can say that's yeah, yeah very good very good <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was uh it was a bitch to level up <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah i'm really glad they changed that i mean i never played it but like <laughs> my god the, the, the streams i've watched i'm like just oh my god can we hurry up i want to go further into this. <laughs> um i mean um i guess i'll go um go right ahead. mine will be short mine will be very short but like um honestly like it, uh i'm still a little conflicted because it doesn't feel too yet for me like assassin's creed like it has a hint of it but is it really to me like i don't know i like it though because i the it looks interesting though from what i'm seeing what i hear it's stuff it's it's got a lot of stuff i i like the they also bringing up the like myths and stuff so i'm into myths <laughs> so i was like yes let's have that um i don't know um like uh i said i like what is it the 
I feel I feel it's weird now. Um, don't think I really talked about this last time, but the the game choices where you can be a dick or you can be very nice to the characters, and that kind of like reflects the how the game will go. I always find that weird because I always feel like, what if what if I pick something else then? Like, can I go back and pick something else? Because I don't like what's going on. <laughs> but like, uh, so I think like the one thing I get about is like it, I I would choose. 100% to try to see how much I can be a dick in this game, and so I push my limit. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing my true colors. Really pushing your luck with people, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. My thing. Okay. I keep getting distracted by the side missions. We're going, oh yeah, I know, I need to go to like this big, like, raid and so forth and continue on the storyline but but setting fire to stuff or oh let me spend 30 minutes to find this like one gear piece yeah. <laughs> it's like you're trying to find like secret tunnels and everything else and just like oh it was just inside this building oh my gosh i had an ass of a time trying to search my way through certain tunnels <laughs> Yes, I. it's like, oh god, one of my biggest pet peeves. But the story itself, I, have, I haven't gotten as far as I wish I've gotten through, because finals. But what I've played so far, I really love the storyline. Everything just kind of flows together. You don't see many copycats of characters. Mm-hmm. They all have their own personality, their own goals and achievements they want to reach. And there is really choices in the game, as Sin said, that you're like, oh no, I just made the wrong choice. I, I, I want to go back now, but it's too late because your other save file has already deleted that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh no. <laughs> well. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I guess it's my turn. Um, yeah, go right ahead. It's, I, I actually. I like the story. I can't say I dislike it, but at the same time, um, I did find it a little discouraging after a certain area. Obviously, I won't go over it, but it just, it's more or less, it shows you the, um, the issue that happens when you're passing a game series throughout different developers who all have different ideas. So then the next team has to work with the ideas of the old developers. So... There's a certain area where you'll actually start to see um, the game have sort of a conflict in remaining in its own topic. But overall, for like the rating, the rating, I love the rating. Um, the overall trying to form alliances can get a little tedious after a while. Because then you're more like, oh man, are you serious? Like again, I have to do this? <laughs> that kind of stuff. Side <laughs> missions, very, they, are, they did a really good job at drawing you out of like story to just get involved with the world i can't, i have a really hard time focusing on the story because i run into a side mission and i do that and then i see something else and i do that and and next thing i know i spent just eight hours doing random stuff throughout the world instead <laughs> of what i needed to do so i was i gotta give him props that was a good job um the character like going back to a war into the story it creates a little bit of a conflict because then the image you get of Abor is the one you make, not the one that's intended. More or less like, you know, how in the older games, you know Connor because of who he was, not because of who you made him. Because, of course, the only changes you could really make was uh, change the outfit, probably. Uh, probably the weapons you used. But in this time around, it's more of entirely about who you make your character. But so far, it's actually been pretty good. I haven't been able to get to the ending because, again, I get so focused on everything else. But once I run out of stuff outside of the world, I'll probably <laughs> go and fo- focus on the story finally once it's the <laughs> last thing I can do. But, yeah, so far, it's pretty good. All right. Well, you gotta, you've got quite some time before the next episode to get finished with the campaign. <laughs> 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 All right. So that was that was the story segment of things. Now we move to the controls and fighting mechanics, which I believe we have some mixed opinions in the group. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's 
em- Emmers, you may vent your frustrations. Okay, I pretty much have broken my L3 button from having to hold that thing down to sprint. <laughs> <laughs> like, when I first saw the controls, I'm like, wait, like, L3? To, to run? Not, not like R3? Oh no, R3 is Eagle Vision? Oh no. Uh-huh. <laughs> So okay. that's probably, it's something I'm still getting used to. I'm like 20 some hours into the game, and I'm still getting used to the fact that L3 is sprint, and my L3 butts it is now like weirdly jammed, so it doesn't want to work half the time. Uh, but I want to see if our fighting mechanics, like using uh, like R1, and R2, L1, L2, is more natural to me, probably because I read that actually. Um, Fair. Because since May, I've been grinding, not May, like July, August, I was sort of grinding Red Dead a lot. And just kind of, that kind of just flowed naturally to the controls. And then the special moves that you get, I've barely used them. I keep forgetting about them. Really? (laughs) (laughs) And it's like, for me, it's like, oh no, which one is which? It hasn't flown naturally yet of like, oh, this button is this move, this left is this move. And so I have to like pause the game and then go and like see which one is which and like, oh, I should use this one for this fight that unpause the game and hope I actually remember it during that past 30 seconds. And that I do it fast enough before I get killed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I just tend not to use the special moves. At least right now, I might do it later in the game when I kind of found the ones I like to use as I find more of the books. But right now, I'm just basically axe, shield, not even stealthing. I'm just running in and killing the first thing in sight. <laughs> <laughs> Which for me, after a long day of work, feels so satisfying. But yeah, <laughs> right. that's about it for me. All right. Well, uh, <clears throat> I will say that I do tend to get a finger cramp with the triggers at times, and it, uh, and you know that stamina meter? I hate that, yes! I hate that thing oh, so much. I, I, whenever I'm, yeah. whenever I'm running away from a lynx, I'm like, okay, now might be a good time to roll. Okay, I can't roll, so just keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running, and it catches up to me, and I lose more health than I should. And it's just, you know, I miss, I guess it makes sense, given that all things have very limited stamina, but this is a video game. If I want to sprint nonstop, yeah. either on my horse or with my own two feet, I should have the right to do so. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if there's a wild cat or a wild zebra or some crap chasing me. But... Uh, as for the fighting mechanics, uh, <laughs> despite how excessive my trigger use is, it's uh, it's it's not that bad when you get used to it. You know, it's like some people will disagree, but it's it just takes some getting used to, and it's like uh, it's it's just all about. Uh, strategy, how quick you move, timing your uh, attacks and such, stuff like that. And I will say that I'm guilty of using the rope dart more than once. I'm assuming that I'm assuming that everybody knows what I mean by that. <laughs> but mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's a bit iffy for me. Let's just say that. Um, who's um turn is it? uh it's it sins it sins <laughs> everything <laughs> um okay i mean i i don't play it so i, I don't have oh. the experience oh right um, okay of course <laughs> the buttons but <laughs> <laughs> sorry i keep forgetting but like uh yeah no i mean i'm i'm that rare one um <laughs> we got to keep it spoiler free <laughs> but um I mean, just like really fast. I um, I feel like this the stamina though. I I would feel I would like it just because it gives me another thing to like 
strategize for. Like, I like to plan what I'm going to do when I'm doing games like that. Um, so I, I feel like I have to consider, like, okay, if I'm going to run, where am I running to? And can I get somewhere safe really fast? <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm also just, like, basing this off, like, kind of a little bit, like, a little, it reminds me a little bit like Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, and that stamina bar is so, it shrinks so fast. I don't know how fast it shrinks in this game, but, you know, like I learned so fast to like how to manage, like, okay, my character cannot be this far away and battle at the same time. So I have to, you know, lead my enemies closer or like make my base somewhere else. Um, but another thing I noticed, though, um, like I'm not gonna get too deep, um, too into it, but I noticed like this game is a little more aggressive than like sneak attacks. Like most of the games that we like, well, at, at least the ones I played, um, they didn't. It involved more like you have to plan, you have to sneak behind, kill, run away. That was the missions. I feel like for this one, it was a, it's a lot more like it's kind of like that, but you have to also, uh, you know, you have the raids, so you have to like go charge forward and attack right <laughs> um so i, I kind of like that though like that's i don't know <laughs> like it gives me um a different thing to work with than just having to like okay i gotta sneak and i gotta kill and then i gotta run <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. so i mean that's it okay uh could i could i bring something up before we move on to Aiden real quick I, sure. I don't know why but i totally forgot about the stealth mechanics of the game and Oh god. <laughs> uh I'm guessing that you're not a fan of it, Emers. <laughs> no. Um well, I suck at stealth a lot. <laughs> like even the pro- like other Assassin's <laughs> games I've tried to play, I always get killed because I suck at stealth. <laughs> um even on Red Dead, I suck at stealth. I suck at stealth. And so the fact that in this game I'm able to just charge in axe swinging and killing the first thing in sight, I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm mainly in the game for bloodshed in the story. And that's my whole purpose in life at the moment. Um, <laughs> but even in the settings, I chose easier settings because for me, I play games to relax. So I don't want to get stuck on a on like a certain part and I get frustrated and quit because that's a piece of whole purpose why I spent sixty dollars for the game <laughs> if I'm not going to play it because I'm too mad at it. So the fact that there's there's the option where you don't have to use stealth and I put like almost all my skill points in melee. I'm happy with that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So the time. I have used stealth like in a few missions because it does feel really cool. Um, like in those distrusted areas on the map, like I do use stealth to try to get away from the guards, but I usually end up felling and just causing bloodbath in the city instead and running out. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Fair enough. I understand your point of view, but as a guy that thrives on stealth kills especially in a game like assassin's creed i i definitely like what they were going for here something different with the hidden blade like there are times where you can just press a button and just stealth kill somebody but there are times where you gotta like uh press the same button but you have to wait till a bar goes into a colored bar on the screen and it's it's all a matter of timing and i actually kind of like that i like that a lot it's a matter of sometimes skill. It can get easy at times, but sometimes the colored bar is just really, really skinny, and it's a little difficult to succeed in that area. But still, I kind of, I digged it. I dig it. I dig what they were going for. Okay, Aiden, now um, you can go go right ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so overall, um, the controls are quite difficult to get used to at first because I was playing before that Ghost of Tsushima. That was kind of like my Assassin's Creed replacement, which did a really good job. Um, So I I had a lot of like mixed controls for a while, but after switching some around and and fixing the controls, because at least the game lets you switch the buttons as you please, and changing the toggle because I got really tired of having to hold down the sprint button, so I just uh, changed it to toggle. 
um overall after a couple of um days in it i got used to it um to say the least the combat is not bad i like the combat but at the same time i was never a fan of that weird hit this person x amount of times in order to kill them i just like more the realistic approach they used to have but that's another conversation for another day um overall the animations are really nice i i always had a pet peeve for animations i hated how odyssey did not have as many animations as it should have had this game it recycles them a lot but at least you get to see them more often so it brings a bit more sense of uh, satisfaction um it is nice that they did this new system in attempt to approach uh, a better a better perspective so basically depending who you're watching you'll see them fight entirely different which is a really nice uh, little addition i am used to just pulling out the bow and shooting the weak points just to go straight for the kill like cuz i i just i'm a fan of those quick kills and um that was a really good addition. I love how if you stab them from behind with a weapon, depending the weapon is a different animation, so go straight for the kill too. Sometimes it does it from the front. It's not as consistent, but it happens. Um, I'm not a fan of how Ebor uh, switches the weapon he has to use the enemy's weapon to kill him, because then I'm like, I'm using a two-handed sword to see a two-handed animation. You know, I don't want to see him hammer someone down, but that's another difference, I guess. Um, for the stealth, I am happy they actually changed it. They gave the players the option to make it lethal uh, at all times in the settings. So that's freaking awesome. I freaking hated the one they did in, in Odyssey. Um, so now you're able to actually kill people who are way higher than you in stealth. And then if you get seen, then of course that's in a whole different story. But it's good that they added that. Uh, available approach and then once you unlock the skill for the uh, special assassination where you like you know you need to time it right then that you can turn off that setting and then go off of that it's nice that they're attempting to give stealth um a let's say a more uh sense of skill and depth um is it necessarily like directly good or bad that's more of a matter of opinion i was not strictly a fan of it but at the same time i'm more thankful that i have this than nothing at all compared to you know odyssey <laughs> before it was kind of like well you're screwed you know um this game actually gives the players who enjoy stealth a choice which is really nice i love stealth i played most of this game on stealth because it's just how i play games and um love the takedowns sometimes can be a little slow or over exaggerated but it is definitely like a good breathe of fresh air to look at because it is it is significantly better to look at i love how the hidden blade is positioned differently the certain takedowns on certain targets change and you can be like wow that's actually pretty pretty interesting it shows the biking side of a ward using the hidden blade how he doesn't stab him once but like multiple times if they're bigger targets it's it's really good um and also like this the awesome of uh being able to walk up behind an enemy and not having to necessarily use the hidden blade if you hold a heavy attack your able will actually use that weapon to kill them um the game tells you it's not a stealth kill but it does work as a stealth kill so that's i guess a little tip for others but um yeah i'm just more or less like satisfied i'm not like super pleased with it but i say it is enough and it's a reasonable change compared to what we were getting now more or less i'm just concerned where we're gonna go forward from here so i don't know if they're gonna continue improving things or making them worse for the future <laughs> so we'll see what happens but overall i was i was pretty pretty satisfied with what we got well i gotta say that was probably the most descriptive uh speech you ever gave this episode <laughs> which is a good which is a good thing i assure you that yeah <laughs> all right so next up is we're almost through here next up is the open world and settings now i don't know about you guys but i think that they're that the settings are just drop dead gorgeous i'm going to say that much yes Yes. yeah (laughs) just from the lighting the uh 
the way everything is designed, the the snow, the rain, the trees, the way the sun shines down, all that stuff. There was a particular city, I can't remember, uh, I probably shouldn't go into that if I don't know the name yet, but yeah, it's just, everything's either just icy cold or just feels really warm and comfortable, and I just, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's just a really nice, nicely designed place, you know, a nice map. It's not too big, That's 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 a definite plus. And, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's just enjoyable to be immersed in this kind of world. I haven't felt that kind of immersion in a while. And I'm really glad that they went all out with this map with the, the colors, the lights, the way everything looks and feels. It's just amazing. Now I'm done. I can... <laughs> I can definitely agree with that. Like, oh god, I love it so much. I'll put on like my really nice gaming headphones and I'll just like be in the zone. I can just be standing in a field and I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> I'm a Viking now. <laughs> this is my new life and no one can stop me. And then I hear my pops in the background like, I've been calling you for dinner for like the past ten minutes now. Where are you? <laughs> um like every time I go to a synchronization place, I having like taking screenshots and so forth. I need to actually like post them or something because the settings and just the lighting you get during those scenes and like seeing like all the ravens actually flying around. It's just like, the small little touches, you know, like oh yes, you're part of the Raven Clan and everything else. And this is like the burn for this game. Um, and like if you're just wandering around, like you can you see like ravens everywhere. Everywhere you look, there's a ravens. And if you're like idle for such a long time, like your raven will even like come onto your shoulder. I'm not going to try to pronounce this fame. Yeah, because <laughs> I know I'm going to butcher it. <laughs> but I love it when like I go idle. I take some like screenshots with my um, gear on. I'm like, oh yes, this looks nice. This looks satisfying. I don't look like a crackhead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I can agree with the map not being like too big because it's like oh man it's like 500 uh, like yards away or it's like a thousand yards away or even like 10,000 like for this one mission you had to like travel a long distance to get to like one of the other cities but you just go on your ship you listen to some nice like music or you listen to some of the stories and you're just immersed and you're chilling, you're vibing, you're trying not to crash. <laughs> and then it doesn't even feel like that long and like, oh, you're already here. Because you're just like so fascinated with seeing everything. My favorite areas is like the fall looking areas where you see like the orange, red and yellow trees and you're seeing the leaves fall and you're just walking around the city. You're like, this is nice. This reminds me of, like, my hometown, but with a, a lot older architecture around the area. <laughs> <laughs> and with this being, like, the time of year where I started feeling like, a little bit more homesick, it just, like, kind of helped me, I guess you can say. Because I live in the land of gators, so I don't get to experience seasons down here. <laughs> And just being able to see, like, those towns and, like, experience fall in-game, like, has actually helped me a bit during the past, like, month. Yeah, it's been a month since the game's been out. Um, but yeah. Okay. You brought up the, <laughs> you brought up the raven being on your shoulder or arm or something like that, and I just want to say, that is the most useless bird I have ever had the displeasure of being saddled with <laughs> throughout all the past three games. Yes! It, okay. <laughs> he will, he will help you find an area... He will highlight an area if you want to, but if you're going into a fort, he will not highlight an enemy for you, for the life of you, for the life of him, and I cannot keep track of anybody. I have to do it, I have to do it myself, I have to go into enemy territory and crouch down, use eagle vision, highlight as many enemies as I can, but the bird can't do that. What's his name? What's the raven's name? Hold on, give me a second. 
Right. I can agree with the bird being useless. I haven't even played the past two games. And I've seen like video like footage of Odyssey and um or Origins. And I'm like, wow. Yes, thank you for glowing the location. I need to go search my person. Sinan. <laughs> Sinan. Sinan is the Sinan? name. S Y N I N. Sinan. Give me. It... I thought you were saying my name. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. <laughs> I was saying that. That was the name of the raven. I will say. Okay, I, I'll, I'll say this much and I'll go back to you, Sin. Give me Icaros any day. I prefer Sanu, but if I got to choose Icaros over Sinan, I will definitely go with Icaros any day of the year. <laughs> okay, Sin, it's your turn. All uh, right. <laughs> op- open world, about the open world, not the bird. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that. I don't know the bird, so I have nothing. But no, the open world. Um. Okay, like, when I saw, like, the, like the trailers and then, like, the art for it, I'll be very honest, I was already excited because, like, they put a lot of detail. Like, that was, like they put a lot of detail. I Or try to in the other in the other games but this one uh, honestly i i really really love it it's like i don't know as me who loves to do like landscape art like it was i was like i wish i can do this (laughs) um the screenshots i've seen are just it look kind of looks like you actually did take like you went outside and you took a photo and i'm like wow but this is a video game (laughs) so it's it's uh I don't know. I think they did a really good job with like the like the lightings and the mood. Like the atmosphere of the game is like nice. Um, you know, there's like some places that's really calming looking, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> I love it. Um, you know, I love open worlds, so I can't like I don't know. Open worlds can't really go wrong for me. Um, so like. If, right, if I get it this Christmas, I'm excited to just being play uh being play. I can't wait to just start playing it. Um so yeah, I mean it's mine is short. <laughs> I don't really have much. It's okay. Um I suppose it is my turn. Yeah. Um say as much or as little so, as you want. <laughs> yeah. Um all right, well the world it definitely is a plus. To me, it doesn't come as a surprise because Ubisoft has multiple times before tried to showcase their art team and how good they are with open worlds. Um, In Odyssey, it worked really well. The world was beautiful, but they ran into the issue where things were seeming like it was just a bunch of reused assets up to a point because it was like, oh, it just it seems like the world is full, but at the same time, so empty. In this one, they did a really good job of avoiding that feeling. So anywhere you go, you'll see a couple reuse assets, of course, but it won't feel that repetitive. It'll feel more alive. It'll feel like more NPCs actually have something to do. Um, so they did a really good job of making the world actually feel alive. I love Lincolnshire. It looks amazing. The town is beautiful. I love just I just love it the, the way they did England. Um, I miss Norway. I gotta go check if I can go back or something because I, I haven't checked if I can. I really loved it at the start. It was amazing. It's the snow deems are really well done. I I'm someone who enjoys just the like the medieval cities and the snow and for that it's like actually breathtaking what they did. Um, overall, I wouldn't. I won't. It, I'm, I would say it's a tie for me with Origins because somehow Origins looks on par with Valhalla, even though it's an older game. To me, it just looks like it's on par. Even though it was mostly deserts and sand, I found so much beauty in that game. Um, I was not disappointed with Odyssey, though I felt like it was a little too colorful. <laughs> um, but seeing like Valhalla, I'm, I just love it. They did it just right. Nothing seems overly done. Nothing seems like over the top it's just done right um so yeah i think they did an amazing job i'm just looking forward for what they do next in the series because they definitely since they got their stuff more figured out now they definitely can get like a team like i don't know there there was some thoughts that the next one was going to be in china so 
if they got the same team for that, it would be amazing to look at what they can come up with. Fingers crossed. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And you can go back to Norway whenever you want, Iden. <laughs> oh, I I got yeah, I I have I have not checked on that side. I just but I definitely should because I loved how it looked over there. Yeah, I just I'm not quite sure how you can go back though. I gotta check for that myself. Well, I isn't it like super high powered over there? Yeah. Uh, one area in particular is. Oh, okay. So I need. To, I know we need to go back and do like some of the side missions and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it's not like going back there like the very end of the game. Like, huh? Huh? <laughs> Wait, I need to defeat this person. We are so weak. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next topic is we ask ourselves the question: Is Valhalla? Uh, can it be considered an Assassin's Creed game? Like, there was some, like, we all know how much Odyssey was not an Assassin's Creed game, or at least it didn't feel like it, but is it different with Valhalla? This is a little bit harder for me to answer, so I haven't played the past two games before this one, because it was like, oh, the reviews are bad, I'm not wasting my money. Oh. Um, <laughs> but I want to... I'm trying not to get into spoilers now. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that we are seeing you are getting closer to the original Assassin's Creed game. Um, like the assassins you do meet in Valhalla, they're wearing more the Altair's robes. I heard one of my friends say, like, oh, it's not, oh, uh, it like breaks canon because of that, because like that was in Jerusalem and everything else. And I'm like, well, guess what? I haven't played that game, <laughs> so it's hard for me to it's hard for me to see that. Um, and I think the weird part is that we have seen over the past few years a lot, and I mean a lot more open world games. And I think it's because of the fact that we're seeing more open world games that Ubisoft had to adapt to appeal to the market. I think that's the whole reason why we got to this new generation i want to say uh where it's more of the grind and everything else um because people are saying oh they like fallout they like skyward they like red Dead, they like go to um Kishimi. i can't pronounce that oh god <laughs> <Kishima. laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry my my like mouth was decided now nah, you're not saying that word today um <laughs> And I think that was the whole reason why Ubisoft had to take the path it went down. So, to me personally, I do see this more as a Assassin's Creed game to pick the last two. It's, you do see some mythology in it, some Norse mythology, which I really like. But it's not, oh, I'm going to defeat this god <laughs> now <laughs> and go into like a pyramid or temple or something. And it it feels more realistic, like it's close to an actual Assassin's Creed game, where yeah, you do have some mythology, but you do have realism at the same time. Like, I can't jump off a mountain and survive. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I think my favorite part is how Eivor, it's like when they get their head and blade and everything else, and they're, they're like, oh, I'm slapping on this at the top of my arm. And the assassin's like, but you're supposed to wear it underneath. He's like, nah, I'm fine. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and it was moments like that that actually like made you laugh because I'm like, man. Like, uh, we'll get back to Emma in my character. I made like I made like gloves and so forth for for hidden blades. And I'm like, I like the fact that. It's another style of hidden blade. It's not the generic, oh, you only wear it under your forearms, the blade's hidden. But, oh, look, you got a cool flash of design on it. But it was like, now nah, we're going all out here, Seaheart. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm getting off topic, kind of. But, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's kind of weird uh, since the whole game. Oh, man, that's weird. That's a spoiler. Yeah, 
I can't yeah. say that. Then. Whatever you're about to say, <laughs> say something else. I'll see them in a few weeks. Okay, a few weeks. Um, two weeks, I'll say that. Okay. But for me, I want to call this an Assassin's Creed game because of like everything I've seen so far. It I feel like you're working with the assassin. I think that's kind of more of spoiler free because you kind of know that already by the trailers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's like because of reasons like that, it's not like oh we're like this name. And we just so happen to have a blade. And we just so happen to know the artifacts. It's, yeah, we're existing. We're not official yet, but we're existing. Uh, please, please validate us. <laughs> <laughs> and it's because of that reason I do call this an Assassin's Creed game. That's it. I'll stop. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> just plain and simple, I definitely consider this an Assassin's Creed game because... For one thing, it actually you don't play as an assassin. That much is clear, but it involves the assassins. Uh, you actually go on assassin business. You can interact with certain assassins in the game, and it and you don't have to use a spear. You have the hidden blade. You have that back. You can put on a hood. You the stealth, the stealth mechanics, whether it's social stealth hiding in a haystack, or going up behind somebody and killing them. It's, it's all that that, to me, makes this feel like an Assassin's Creed game, and it doesn't feel like it's trying to take anything away from that. So, yeah, that's all I have to say. It's definitely an Assassin's Creed game in my eyes. All right. Oh, yep, um, right. <laughs> so I was trying to think, um, because like, I'm like, I'm like in the middle. I'm not really sure if I consider it or not. Um, cause I think right now, like, kind of like what Emma's were saying, like Ubisoft had to adapt really fast to like the new gaming systems and stuff, um, and the concepts of it. So like, free world and all that was like getting really high up and everyone wanted to play it and stuff um and ubisoft games weren't really like that um we had to follow like the system of events that we happened because obviously like the game of it was like the, the older ones um when we were playing desmond we were following a memory so we had to follow what altair did we couldn't change that like we can't change the past we had to follow what altair did um but with this one we're not really playing or I guess we are, but I don't know. Like, this is where the weird part is. Like, we're apparently, we are in the, um, what's that called again? The machine? Animus? Uh, Anim yeah. Why did my brain fuck that? <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> um, we're, we're, like, we don't have a character. We don't have a Desmond anymore. The Desmond's gone. Um, I don't want, I don't know if that's a spoiler for people. It, it, oh, it's so pretty well known. Really that's, that's, yeah, okay. Really I don't know, because I remember talking to someone, and they were like, Desmond's dead? I'm like, yes, it's been it's been a while. <laughs> I don't know where you at. <laughs> um, but, you know, he's gone. So, you know, and we haven't really got anyone back to kind of have, like, I don't want to say, like, replace Desmond, but we don't have anyone like him you know we don't have someone going um playing a role in his position so it's been kind of a a creative aspect now um but i do feel like now they're actually getting more of a hang of it i feel like the last two games were kind of like teasers testers um to what the future games would look like and how they're gonna have to you know um change and for us to play, um, which I kind of like, though. It, and considering the fact that they're also going really, really far in the, the history, like, going back, so I also feel like playing as assassins for everything wouldn't really work for most of the history. So, I, at least to me, I don't know. <laughs> I could be very wrong. <laughs> um, but, you know, like, they're managing it, and it's it's they're good games. But I guess people are still kind of like stuck on like, well, it's not like the old games. And it's like, well, no, it's it's not. It's not supposed to be like the old games. They're trying to change everything. Right. Um, 
but like like you said like they now they they brought back like most of, they brought the hood they brought the hidden blade so you know i consider like yeah it's this is assassins now like you have the two i guess main um things that made it assassin's creed <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's my stance all right um so that was my turn yeah, right? yeah. you're yeah. up biden all right so Oh boy, this is gonna be a long one. Um, so I would consider this game an Assassin's Creed game because um, they brought back many iconic elements that should have stayed there. Like they took out an Odyssey for no reason, probably just to make the game release faster. I don't know yet, but um, like they brought back the um, kill sequences. So basically, after you kill an enemy, you get to have a more a bigger connection you get to understand the reasoning they have a little confession scene they brought that back that was so important in the games because it was not only like just an iconic element it was one of the most if not the most iconic element in the assassin's creed series how um the assassins or whoever you played would have a connection to who they killed um so and then bringing that back, even on minor, what would you consider a minor enemy? It it was a really good touch, and I'm glad they brought it back because the ones they did in Origins were amazing. The ones in this game are really good. I wouldn't say they're better than the ones in Origins, but they're really good. Um, overall, just the like many little elements they started bringing back. Um, obviously the hidden blade, the hood, the blending, that kind of stuff was really good on their side. Um. I would consider it an Assassin's Creed game more because it actually goes back to being on topic of Assassin's Creed. Um, just being able to see Basim and him speak of the Brotherhood, how he has his own uh, hold on to them. His faith revolves entirely on the, the Hidden Ones, which is the Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, how others perceive it. And how if you look through like their little um, notes and stuff they leave around, how the world sees them and how they blend in with the world and how their strengths back then were a little different compared to the ones you would see in um, Assassin's Creed 2 through, through and forward. It, it's nice. It's really good. And it, it brings back that sense of, oh, I'm actually playing Assassin's Creed right now. <laughs> um, I wouldn't necessarily say the Hidden Blade is like, what makes the game an Assassin's Creed game? That's something I saw many people complain about um, about Odyssey. I, unlike others, I actually did like using the spear. What my problem with the spear was is that the takedowns were unnecessarily long because you would stab someone through the head and then snap their neck and then pull out the spear, even though this person was dead long before. So you know there was uh, those things. I actually am a fan of being able to use a. a different weapons instead of just the hidden blade for stealth that's always been a thing for me and uh this game bringing the hidden blade back i enjoy how they did different animations how they went with different approaches because you are playing a biking so that was a really good detail i really enjoy that i like how they also let me use my two-handed sword if i want to use it for a stealth kill it's very nice touching but what to me made an Assassin's Creed game is more how the world began to focus back on it and how they're treating the hidden ones as um not only as like a ongoing thing but as something to look back to and let you know like look this is what Bajek did achieve and this is the greatness that he you know that he started with Aya and and look where it is now you can see how it it aged in that world and you can see how it's ongoing and how strong now the um, order of i almost said the order of forcos because i'm playing chronic uh <laughs> the order of ancients have gone it's overall really good i i'm actually really happy with the approach they took i was really disappointed with what they did with odyssey to me the peak assassin's Creed game will always be unity because of the gameplay and how they actually threw you into the brotherhood as a you started as a sort of a recruit pretty much yeah you start as a recruit so from there you, you kind of like had a, diff, a more fulfilled perspective into it rather than being like the top hero like uh Ezio and and um 
Altair and Connor, those three were pretty much the top heroes. Those were really good perspectives. You can see how like they've slowly throughout the years been trying to give you different perspectives into the Brotherhood from different, um, basically different starting points. But I actually really like where they were. They started going in this direction. I haven't finished the game yet, but so far it actually has like no doubt given me the like the satisfaction I need to be able to say yes, this is an Assassin's Creed game. So yeah, I that's pretty much it. I I do see it as an Assassin's Creed game. I could not agree more with every <laughs> word of what you just said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> for the last thing on our list, I'm going to ask everybody to keep it short and sweet since we're probably well over an hour by now. <laughs> uh, we just said an hour. Okay. So let's yeah. so let's just keep this short, sweet and simple. Uh what are our overall thoughts of the game? Embers? Um I actually I just really enjoy the game. I enjoy the fact you have your own choice of how you want to go through the game. You don't have to go through a specific path. So for me, it doesn't feel very job through it and actually just chill and play. That's it. Okay, next. <laughs> uh, I can honestly say that it doesn't feel like as much of a disaster as people are calling it or were expecting it to be. It's it's far from perfect. I am going to say that much, but it's it's definitely not that bad when you get to you know get into everything and it definitely feels like it's getting its identity back, the Assassin's Creed series. Maybe not entirely, maybe not fully, but you definitely feel a familiar sense from something before that you haven't felt in a long time, that I haven't felt in a long time. So yeah, I'd say it's definitely well worth 60 bucks or whatever you pay for the game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, honestly, I'm sorry, my brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm very excited for it. I was, you know, I I wanted to buy it the like pre or I wanted to pre order it, but I couldn't at the time, and then I still could, I still can't. But uh, you know, just excited. It looks really interesting, and overall, I just love all AC games. I just I wish I had more money to buy it. Mm. <laughs> um, well, yeah, kind of. I can agree with pretty much everyone's perspectives. I'm very happy with what they're doing. I'm glad. Um, they actually took a swing at trying to do a middle ground for both the old fans and the new fans. Um, I'm not really happy with the way they're handling the Animus. Obviously, the now using a, an actual corpse, <laughs> <laughs> like in the last two games, so, uh, how they're trying to focus directly on the DNA, which... You know, in Odyssey, they focus on a spear that's been through so many people to actually find DNA. I don't know. For this one, you know, they actually, you're using a, you know, body and all, but it's, I'm not happy with it. I do miss the importance of Bloodline, how it was such a big focus back then, but it's definitely at least trying to focus on what the roots really were and how those things really matter to the players. So it's just pretty much, I'm happy with this, but as always, I'm just looking forward um, with concern what will the future bring out of what what we just had. So yeah. That's pretty much it. All right, nice. Okay, I think that wraps up our episode. Yay! Uh oh. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I know we dragged Aiden and Sen into this like the very last minute, pretty much. <laughs> um, so, just glad you two were also able to join. So, it wasn't just Bella and I for an hour. Right. <laughs> um, thank you to everyone else listening. Of course, we are going to have another episode next month after our spoiler rule lift has gone up. Yep. Um, in, in January. And that will pretty much wrap up season three. Of this podcast, I think it's what we've been planning. I don't yeah. know. We might end up doing like, hey, let's just do a random episode. Um, or try to play Among Us again. <laughs> I oh my sad- God. <laughs> I sadly lost all the audio oh, footage. Oh man. Uh, so I was never able to edit that one. But I kinda hope we can try to do that again with the community. That'll be fun. It's winter break. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> what was that? 
<laughs> Sound like someone scraping I... a fork against a wooden table. Not a polished wooden table, but a really <laughs> splintery wooden table. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, I hope that everyone has a good day and night, morning, whenever. I won't. And, oh, uh, we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right. Goodbye, everybody. All right. Goodbye. Guys.